This is Chang Yi. You may know him as a film director who won the Golden Horse Award. Now he is the founder and CEO of Liu Li Gong Fang, and his goal is to restore this traditional Chinese art and make it renowned throughout the world. In recent years, the global art market has hit an all-time high, and investors are wondering if Liu Li pieces are safer than buying stocks. Mr. Zhang Yi, welcome to our show. Well, thank you. Yes, I'm looking forward to this conversation because you're a film director, you're also an artist, and you're a businessman. Now, I want to ask you a difficult question to okay. start the interview. What is the difference between filming a movie and running a business? In movie, the most important thing you have to integrate everything. If for, for Lily, I most cases it's just exactly the same, because uh, the the core part is always the about the create what your creation is, and then you just the uh, you know imply to the all your resource to uh, you know accomplish that artistic value versus commercial value mm -hmm. because you can make an artistic film mm -hmm. which the audiences small audiences will love but actually today we want to make big films with blockbuster uh, box office results mm -hmm. so what about your glass making now mm -hmm. are you more satisfied with the small artistic pieces or the commercial value and the return usually when you are artist you thought you're the god you dominate right. everything. Right, you make something beautiful, yeah, someone say, will buy it. You don't have to explain. Right. You, know, you just give the, oh, artwork. that's my design, my, that's my creation. But the problem is the, uh, my feel is totally different. Yeah. I have to uh, you know, balance this kind of relationship. What will be your product? What is your product? What will be the response from your customer? So it goes back to the exactly. dilemma of the director. That, that will be right. if you like to be, uh, you know, more, should say, uh, business art, right? Commercial art. That will be the key point. Today, Liu Li Gongfang has become the icon of modern Chinese glass art, and the pioneers in this industry are none other than Chang Yi and his wife Loretta Yang. Their workshop operates 70 galleries across Asia. Europe and the United States. Internationally renowned museums have acquired over 20 pieces of their collection. What products are most favored by your customers? Chinese motifs. Okay. Yeah, since we are major market is here, the Chinese motifs always be the first one. The dragons, the Buddhas? No, not exactly. Because uh, we sort of emphasize that we should be, uh, as we mentioned, is the benevolent. And all our the products designed from uh, this kind of uh, the, the focus on this spirits. So every pieces, if we emphasize this spirits and come with the we call the meaning cards, always be a very popular in market. Well, I, I think that that would be our best seller. As you can see, it's very complicated. Very. Complicated. And it's very, um, should say, uh, classic. What is on his back? It's what is it? Just wave. It's, it's oh, just sea wave. It's, it's water. Sea yes, wave. It, it's a turtle. Yes. And and it's Chinese tradition: the turtle holds up the world, right? Exactly. Okay. Tell me about your boutique stores in Shanghai. Are they here for sales, or are they here for branding, or perhaps both? Both, okay. And especially we have our very small museum. We call it Liu Li China Museum in the Tianzi Fang. Yes. People are just always asking, why you have a museum like this? I think we should have, uh, you know, branding as the sales, and both we should be balanced. For branding, don't look the, uh, you know, in the short-term incomes. You have to establish. And always they have the, your brain awareness consistently, never stop. But we can't have, uh, you know, this kind of uh, museum everywhere. So we have the small gallery as well. Tell me about the consumers that come to both. Mm -hmm. Are they tourists? Are they locals? Are they collectors? Both as well. But, you know, the, the point is we our museum, we combine with a restaurant. This restaurant, they will welcome from the old, the new audience as well. 
because not everyone should go to Liu Li Gong Fang, but there's a lot of people that were willing to have it go to your restaurant. Which I have been to, and I've okay. seen the film pictures, and I've seen the glass, and I said, why does this restaurant have glass <laughs> and film pictures? And they said, because yeah. of the founder. That's my first introduction okay. to you, by the way. <laughs> but from this, this, the idea you can gather in right. a new audience. You're educating the market exactly. basically. Which but is when essential. they come to a restaurant, they will find something that some message you like to deliver. A restaurant, just the, uh, we just show all our, our idea. The, even though those are dark, it's the come from Laurie Testy when he was a young girl. She said she was going to create a huge dark. Nobody can destroy it. Nobody can take it for dinner. No one can eat it. Yes. <laughs> Usually our design, we try to have uh, every piece come with a meaning. And this is very dramatic, and really like a, a story, a, a telling a story. And tell me about the poetry that goes with each one. Uh huh. Who writes that? I write that. And you write all of it? Yes. These. Because I think if we just design a glass, it's just the object. If it comes with a meaning, it's just like a, you know, a vehicle. It can carry some message. So let's talk about your stores then. Will they increase over time, or are you going to close stores to cut down the overhead costs? Because mm -hmm. I know I notice you're selling online too. Mm -hmm. We've been very sensibly reviewed all the stores. Okay. Yeah, but see which ones are profitable, exactly. which ones aren't. Okay. So the very close observation and very cautiously to decide which one should be, uh, you know, go Which one should continue. Exactly. So you may close some stores. Focus exactly. on online sure. sales. Tell me about online sales. W where are those sales coming from around the world? Well, I think the uh, Asia is still the major still, market. Okay. But the uh, online store, the problem is our piece is quite huge and our color usually are slightly different. So we have uh, some uh, problem with the, uh, you know, always to say, oh, it's not exactly the pieces I we like saw. I like it, but. <laughs> yes. Okay, right, so right. the color is different. So that really bother us. Yeah. So how do you fix that? Or do you? We just give the, uh, you know, the uh, quite free policy you can return. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. But I guess in the future, too, you can probably use technology to say this is the exact piece you're going to get. Here's the photo of it. In that, the that would be the challenge because almost every, every individual every glass pieces piece are is different. different. And that's the beauty of, of glass art, isn't it? Yep. The major technique of glass art is called pâte de verre. It's a French phrase literally meaning paste of glass. But according to discovered artifacts, the Chinese mastery of glass making techniques dates back to the Han Dynasty. However, after that time period, the art was lost and Chinese history suffered a loss. The technique involves a complex 12-step process. Each step must be performed without error to prevent breakage, irregular air pockets, or impurities. Starting as amateurs, Liu Li Gongfang's mastery over the technique increased day by day and finally revived the lost art. Well, let me ask you a few more business questions and then mm -hmm. we're going to move on to another topic. But first, tell me about your business model now. Mm -hmm. What is it based on or is it something that is, is always changing as you go forward? We just have a sort of, you know, we emphasize that as a cultural concern. Okay. So since the, this, the gore with the just the, uh, always have to uh, direct own all the distribution point. Yeah. So every gallery, we just ask it very precisely, since this, you know, requirement, and we have to, you know, own all the gallery, it become very huge burden. Yes. So that was the problem. We don't do the concise 
and because uh, you know when you consign to somebody right, to a gallery then they can whatever, change the price yes. and right yeah. so uh, since we have to this kind of regulations we're very slowly expanding and tell me about your pieces how many pieces do you make of each one are they uh, limited? we have limited editions okay it depends on the size for the pieces okay so some maybe just one you only do uh, one. the for artist pieces some just they have a uh, eight or two twelve pieces okay but for the our brain pieces, pieces there will be a lot for instance maybe uh, 200 pieces only okay so up to 200 pieces for one yeah one, one item one design within a collection exactly okay tell me about your your cash flow the investment <laughs> i mean originally you started with your yep. own investment okay. that's not easy mm -hmm. i guess you've recu recouped that by now mm -hmm. and what about venture capitalists are there still people investing in your company it's very difficult for venture capital because so uh, we asking for the uh, very independent so we've been contacted for a long time to from the venture capital but it's quite difficult. It is, unless they understand the vision of your art and mm -hmm. the industry you're in, which is up and down and very subjective. Mm -hmm. It's a hard industry to invest in, mm -hmm. um, but time has proven that it has been profitable. Many glass art collectors say it's much better than the stock market. Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers over time, it's mm -hmm. even better than the stock market. So mm -hmm. there is a profitability there. Tell me where you're profitable now, which product lines are in which markets? From last years you know all the uh, economic situation yeah. is a slump quite seriously but we still have the, this kind of stratum but we still you know balance yes you, you've been in existence for 26 years as you mm -hmm. said tell me about the ups and downs when were the highlight years and when were the slump years well this is for we can only say that we have the seasons the usually they come with the uh, the last season will be our booming season. Okay. The uh, second season will be slow. The spring festivals, the festivals you see. Sure, that will be a the only last sales for the gift giving. Exactly. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the last seasons or in the calendar year. Sometimes beginning the year as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the Western markets? Do you see around Christmas time or other gift giving? Do you see an increase in sales? Sure, I think that even for you know last week, I just see the uh, sales report from San Francisco because uh, that's the uh, the uh, July fourth. Right. We have a huge daily income, but not always like this. Uh, from the jewelry or from the uh, from the all the items. Okay. Yes, I think this is very encouraging for that. Is I see several items is purchased by a uh, Caucasian. Okay. But it's, but it's a very, you know, Asian motif. Sure. So I, I, it's quite encouraging for us. In 2001, the company set up Lioli Living, introducing Lioli pieces into everyday life. With affordable prices, more customers are likely to have access to the beauty of glass art. In 2002, Loretta Young created Lioli Plux, an accessory brand for women. By combining Lioli with silver, the brand accentuates feminine concepts and values. Now for ordinary customers, the first time they see your art pieces, it's maybe love at first sight. Mm -hmm. But then they see the price. Okay. And they're a little bit shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this. Well, we got no choice yeah. because since the cost is really is well we're I don't think we can avoid this because the, we're very delicate in all the process. You know, we're in China since the years 1996. We know we have, uh, you know, be follower. There will be a lot of follower. They can duplicate, that they can copy your pieces. Right. They can be more cheaper. Have you seen the copies of your pieces? Lot. As we emphasize ourselves as Liu Li, because of this Asian Chinese term. Right. So we are the first one use the Liu Li as Liu Li Gongfang. But now you can see uh, there's a lot of Liu, uh, whatever. Right. Okay. Well, I think there will be more than 100 different brands around the uh, China. Around the concept of the, the exactly. glass making. But, but are they actually imitating your pieces mm -hmm. or are they changing them? Some, they just be 100% uh, copy your pieces. You see those. What about the quality of those? Not bad because uh, they can hire our staff. Wow. 
you see the in the beginning or three or four years, you can see a lot of people stand in front of our manufacturer waiting shop, to waiting catch and just the workers. De deliver the business card. Yes. Hey, they just say, I know who you mm -hmm. are and I know what is your salary. I will be glad to give you double double your what you're getting. Yeah. This How is do you retain easy. your workers then? Well, we give the uh, just to say uh, more spiritual call. Well, we spiritual call is nice, but it doesn't pay the electricity <laughs> bill. <laughs> really? So that's why we just ask all our staff. We give a lot of training. Okay. My idea would be, uh, you know, since you recruit maybe hundreds, but after three years, 10% remain work with you. You're lucky. 10%. You know, our first day, I just when I established our the manufacturer factory, and I just found something interesting. I see the, all the uh, staff laid on greeting, and we're just training. Everyone should be greeting. Yes. That's the very interesting part. I still be challenged until today. Why you just ask to say ni hao? Is is that so important? But I think of this. Important. It is important, right? That's it shows why. you care. I do, you know, when I look back, I believe in the, you know, the Confucius say, the benevolence. Yeah. It's the Chinese character, is Ren. You can see this two and person. You see, that's a relationship between people and people. If you get along with the others, that's Ren. If you don't, that's no, that's right. Buyan. Now, you've been in existence 25 years, more than 25 years. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with where the company is today? I know a lot of the guests that sit in that very chair say that a CEO is never satisfied. There's always more to go. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Mountain Not higher me. to climb. Tell Not me your me. perspective on this. In the day one, we are in this field. It's not the, uh, just the uh, profit concerns. Yeah. So until 26 years, until today's, we are very enjoy this works. Every day, we have been asked some questions. Is when were you going to retire? I say, oh. Did you ever ask him the, the, the Picasso, when Picasso will retire? Never. True artists never retire. Because That's the, right. we take this not as a, just a, a job. Yeah. It's a, more than a career. As a husband-wife team, Chang Yi and Loretta Young have worked with each other for many years. Their success crosses over from film to glass art. You're a director, so you're going to take these skills, which isn't a big leap. I mean, to, to run a visual art of medium mm -hmm. of film and go to glass. Okay, mm -hmm. that's not a big leap. But Loretta, to how she became an actress, turned glass glass mm -hmm. craftsman. When she was the actress, he just acting with her own body. But when he just get involved in glass, he just used the different material only. He used to the express her yeah, own to emotions. Work. Exactly. Okay. He just used the glass as a media, so he can be uh, free. And because uh, you know, she's just so uh, strong determination. Right. As he decide he was going to do that, he just uh, spent you know only two hours for sleeping. But if I know my Chinese characters correctly, your E, mm -hmm. Zhang E, is perseverance, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> but I think that she, her <laughs> think she would be it. more stronger than mine. <laughs> Absolutely, she did. So tell me about the artistic direction now. So mm -hmm. your series of pieces, does it come from her or does it come from you or both? Both. Actually, we always discuss and we just, uh, you know, uh, exchange all the ideas. And I think that I would be just give the uh, whole directions and she would just follow all the details. For a luxury brand to exist over time, there's histories of 100 years, 200 years, 300 years mm -hmm. when you and I won't be here any longer. Mm -hmm. So who will carry on this company into the future? We've been, you know, think about this for a long time. So there's a team in Liu Li Gongfang. They've been ready for this. Some of our staff have been working with us for 25 years already. So all the idea, all the concept, uh, they are very, very familiar with that. Okay, good. So they can carry on sure, your vision into um, the future. So we look at other, uh, Louis Vuitton, other, or, 
other luxury brands, they're not here any longer, but okay. the, brand, the brand lives on. And, and we hope that for your brand as well. But I want to know what steps you're taking today to prepare that into the future. You know, all that uh, staff I just mentioned, they've been quite senior staff who work with us. And every one of them has been on a very major position in the Liu Li Gongfa already. We emphasize never stop to create. You know, it's just be consistently to, to create. Because for our observation, for the other similar, the, uh, the brain around the whole world, the problem is they interrupt their creation. That's and the, follow the business, you mean, or look for the profit model? For instance, if you observe some uh, similar glass brain around the whole world, you can see some of their pieces been established, been existed for 150 years ago already. Nothing new. Right. Why should the, uh, the, the consumer should purchase these kind of things? It's not just the, you know, I just roll an antique. It should be, a, you know, just like, a, you know, a trendy a product should meet right. what your, 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 your emotion. Today's generation, they don't have the patience to learn that because it'll take two months, one or two or three months, to create even a small uh, picture uh, you, with this technique. So tell me about your craftsmen. Where are you finding the new ones that can carry on this tradition over time? And do you have any fears that this will last into the future? That will be the tragedy for China today. Well, every country, basically, not yeah, just, just China, but the true craftsmanship around the world. Even when we visit, visit the uh, Venice in Italy 10 years ago, I can see the, all the craftsmanship just Murano, stayed away. Yeah, Venice yeah. Murano glass. Right. Because the, when you become a very uh, skillful, experienced blower, you know, I mean the full of glass, you have to learn blowing glasses since the maybe 10 years or 12 years. How can the new generation, they're willing to start in 12 years old and to such a terrible hot workshop to blowing glass? 10 hours, 12 hours a day. So I think this is sad. But for Liu Li Gongfang, in our part, we are very strongly to emphasize this kind of spirits. Because the, when you are in the craftsmanship, I think the more you practice, you will be more modest. Because that will be the more frustrating, you know, the uh, work process. So if the people, they can, you know, believe this idea, they're willing to work. Changi's first love was filmmaking. Although running a company exhausts him, his dreams of producing another movie have not faded away. In 2002, he reconnected with the film industry and established an animation studio called AHA. I established the uh, animation workshops uh, nine years ago, and we've been working quite long. And why we're here is because I think that some of our experience would be sort of valuable to next generation, just for animation only. Okay, animation film. Yes. And this is your own idea, your own investments? Yes. Okay. So that will be more terrible part because the burn money is so fast. Absolutely, well maybe not, wait and see the box office, <laughs> okay. right? <laughs> but okay, that's interesting to me because you have done film directing in the past, you're doing art uh -huh. glass, but now you're going back to film making using everything you've learned in the past 26 years. Uh -huh. 
Now tell me how you view film directing now compared to 25 years ago. Has anything changed? Changed a lot. Technology has. Yes. Back to uh, 30 years ago, we don't have the digital camera. You can't see uh, the playback. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. Uh, today you have uh, just the iPhone, you can film very good quality. But from the mentality, I don't think it will be uh, just a more, you know, improve all the uh, spiritual the part. The storytelling part. Is right. Yes. And I think the uh, new generation will be more self-centered and everything goes so fast. Is this a positive or a negative moving forward, do you think? <laughs> well, it's sad to say that we're totally negative. So as you approach this new 3D film, how are you going to prepare this for a market of 80s, 90s it, it's generation? It's just sort of a typical, the future film. Well, we just define this animation should be a very uh, international standard quality. Second, would be very purely Chinese. Of course, we admire Disney's film, Pixar's film, but we are Chinese. All our behavior, our mentality, our idea of the uh, value is totally different. That was a big criticism. Kung Fu Panda is a great film, but why didn't it come <laughs> from this part of the world? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, I so. think that we should, um, we should not expect a new generation. The only thing they can see is the uh, Kung Fu Panda. Well, good for you. Yes. You're leading the way here with a, a very I hope nice so. film. Hope so. Mr. Zhang, we wish you every success well, with your glass thank you. industry. Thank you.